Hey there viewers, welcome back to Rave All Trades. Today we're going to be working on my Honda Shadow 2003 750cc bike. Sentimental bike to me. I belong to a uh, dear relative who passed away and uh, just occasionally he and I go take a ride sometimes. So I went to jump on it the other day, tried to turn the key on and you can see it's got nothing. It's completely dead. I had a battery tender for it and I would get a green light on it and it was saying it was charged but just after a while these things once they've been discharged enough times or sat for a period of time with them discharged they have a hard time coming back the way that this one was set up the battery tender plug is right here basically it's just a direct connection to the battery so let's just take a peek and verify before we get into it too far what the battery's showing 0.2 volts yeah that's that's pretty far from 12 volts without the key on i'm getting 3.4 volts so you can tell that battery is just shot. So I did what most people do, jumped on Amazon, found myself a replacement battery for this thing for, I don't know, it was like 30, 40 bucks maybe, something like that. Pretty cheap. Model YTZ14S, 12 volt, 11.2 amp hour battery. Are you powered to the max? Sure, why not? comes with some fancy caps that just fall right off some nuts and bolts and this is a rechargeable sealed lead acid battery non spillable all right sure it's kind of funny these batteries are really well hidden in there you can pull these plastic covers off on both sides but the batteries up in here underneath this seat to take a six millimeter allen wrench we're going to take off both allen bolts on this sides and lift the whole seat off push backwards and lift right off and my battery gonna be right down there well, let's take off this cover uh, number two Phillips head excuse me number three Phillips head out the way and here's my battery positive on this side negative on that side and this is my battery tender right here that connects up to here so we're going to put that back together as well so let's take off the negative side first because if I try to take off the positive side and I, the screwdriver touches metal it'll spark so let's go for the negative side first on this one well, that screw, take off these two connectors right here. Now that the negative is disconnected, we can go to the positive and not have to worry about touching any metal with the screwdriver. Most of this is plastic down here, but still want to be careful. Take my battery tender out the way. Y'all may not have one of those. And then reach in here and try to get my fingers down inside there. Get that out. Let's try to grab a little hook and get it out of there. I'm having a heck of a time getting that battery up out of there. What I've noticed is in the center of the box down below the battery, there's a hole. I'm going to try to shove something up through there to push up. All right, just wiggle back and forth. Take this AGM battery from Caltrick out, and you'll see that hole right there. Basically, I shoved a, uh, the wrench down below there, just pushed up through there with the wrench, you know, and pushed the battery while I wiggled back and forth. Now we want to get our maximum power battery here. Maximum something, mighty battery, mighty max. Um, negative on this side, minus sign right here, plus sign right here. So that's negative side, positive side. This right here is my nuts and bolts. Let me get those out. The nut is going to go in there and in there, and then the bolt is going to go down through and, and grab it. We get the battery in here. Let's give it a try. That one drops in pretty easy. My guess is the other battery was swollen. So let's see some square nuts. Let's drop those down inside. Let's 
and I got two bolts. We're just gonna do is hook up the positive. So I did notice a problem between uh, that battery and this battery. This one here has got these edges, has space all the way around. I don't know how to describe it. There's a there's an indentation all the way around, and the battery cables themselves. Try to get you guys to see it. There's a, a lip on this side, one on the front side, and one on the back side to help align everything. Well, this doesn't have a lip on this side right here. So this part of that cable is in the way from seating down properly. It's possible that this battery is not the exact right battery, even though it was listed as it. I can also just try to straighten it out like that, where the tab goes straight out like that. So now that uh, connector can sit on there. The red is prominently labeled. I'm just going to tuck it under just like that. Red first, so I don't have any sparking issues. Let's see, on the black lead, I'm going to have that same problem with a tab sticking down. So let's flatten that out. So flatten that just like that. And then the negative side of my battery tender, I'm going to stick right here. It doesn't matter if you put that, uh, if you have a battery tender, if it's underneath or on top. You want a good connection. The thing is, what I'm what I'm seeing is that the ring terminals on here are fairly large. The hole on here is smaller. So I basically, I'm just mashing that uh, large ring in between those two. Let's give you a better connection. So put my fuse back down in there. Battery cover. Let's put my, I don't know if it's a, I think it's an ECM. Not positive, I think that's what it is though. All right, that's where all my electronics go. Just tuck those back. And then from here, as y'all saw, I should be able to have uh, 12 volts from that battery available here because it's just a connection through a fuse. Twelve point eight volts. I'd say that's pretty good. The underside of the seat, in case y'all want to know, has a hook on the front. Goes up under here. You just place the seat down in position and then slide forward. You'll see that it lines up. And then the two bolts back here should line up. For mine, there's a buckle, a bolt, and then there's this little spacer here. Put our covers back on. And hopefully the gas in here hasn't turned. Nice bright lights. Tell you what, I don't want to start it up in the garage. Uh, let's open up the door. Let's get a full choke. Fuel should be on. It's got gas in it. Let's see what we get. smell is rotten gas and I see it dripping. Pretty sure I'm gonna run some sea foam or something like that through it, see if it uh, cleans it up. If not, I'll order a uh, actual rebuild kit for this thing. If you guys got something out of the video, I really appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more content just like this. Thanks for hanging out guys, I'll catch you on the next one.